Um, now, gardener Linda will discuss a few tips on hardy orchid, ha hardy orchid habitat and pests. Thank you, Linda. Not easy to say that, is it, Sandra? <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Um, yes, this is a very, very interesting topic um, because it these are the kind of orchids we don't uh, all think about right away. So next slide, please. Okay, as, like I say, when we think of orchids, we think of the tropical species. And I discovered that there are over 20,000 tropical species. I had no idea there were so many. So when you go to Trader Joe's or some other place where you can buy an orchid, they're, they're not gonna be the hardy type. They're gonna be the tropical kind that you have to keep indoors. And they can be a little complicated. I don't know about the rest of you, but I have had really very minimal luck getting orchids after they they bloom and die getting the blooms to come back again. I know you should be able to do it, but I, I have not been able to do that. Um, but in addition to those kind of tropical orchids that we're so familiar with, there are hardy orchids. Uh, these are ones that you can grow outside. So they're called also terrestrial orchids, so or in the ground orchids. And there are over 200 species that grow uh, throughout the United States. And generally they grow in zones five to nine. So that would include our zone here in Virginia. So many of these hardy orchids, they will thrive in temperate climates. Some may even thrive in very frigid climates. Uh, there are some that need below freezing temperature uh, in order to, to bloom, um, sort of like tulips and some other perennials where they have to have that, that cold, sh that shock of cold before they'll bloom again. And some of the hardy orchids are like that. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, the good news is hardy orchids don't need much fertilizer. Usually when you're planting them, if you incorporate compost into the soil, and then in future years, you add a little bit more, that's adequate. They don't need, in fact, they don't like a lot of, um, of fertilizer. And the main thing in, in having your hardy orchids thrive is having good soil drainage. So it is possible to plant them in your yard in uh, built up raised beds that have good soil, or you can plant them directly in the ground, uh, excavating a hole and replacing the garden soil with a better mix. And sometimes um, adding sand or perlite to the soil will increase the drainage and will help it um, help the plant prosper. Uh, next slide, please. Okay, so this issue of soil moisture relates to the three main habitats for the hardy orchids. Um, so the first, first group is called the upland species. And these are orchids that do not tolerate soil that's constantly moist. They grow best in full to part shade. And perhaps what the best known uh, example of this is the pink, is the lady slipper, which is often pink, though there are some yellow lady slippers, which are a bit more, um, a bit rarer. And we were discussing before we started the, um, the uh, the webinar today that uh, these do grow wild in the woods in the park I live in Annandale and in Annandale Community Park it had a stand of lady slippers uh, and I understand I think it was Burke Lake Park or another one of the parks that also had the had the lady slippers so they grow in the wild but they're they do not prosper if they you dig them up in the wild and take them home but uh, you can purchase them uh, online or in a local nursery. And I'll give a little more information about that later. But uh, again, the lady slipper is very showy uh, plant, uh, really beautiful. Uh, the next group of hardy orchids are what we call the transition species. So this group can tolerate more constant moisture, but they do thrive under drier conditions. So that's more optimum for them. So these are really good choices for many gardens. Um, and you can use a moisture retentive so soil mix and add that to your planting hole to uh, help make sure that these plants thrive in your garden. Uh, and here's an example with a lovely name, the fragrant ladies tresses, the common name. And you see the uh, scientific name, which I won't try to pronounce below it. 
Um, so this is a kind of, of orchid that, again, that can deal with uh, both more moisture, but also really likes um, drier conditions. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, the final group of the hardy orchids is what we call the West wetland species. Um, it requires constantly moist or even wet soil. So how do you achieve that in your garden? Well, you can line a raised bed or your planting hole with a kind of plastic film uh, to retain the moisture. But again, you want to probably poke a few holes in the plastic to allow slow drainage because these plants will not, they do not like to sit in standing water, though they do like a lot of moisture. And these orchids prefer full sun. And uh, here is another, uh, another example of this kind, the wetland species, the Rosa pogonia, which is this lovely lilac colored uh, orchid. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, um, here are some other hardy orchids. There is the Chinese orchid on the left, uh, the lesser purple fringed orchid, second from the left, then the marsh orchid and the egret flower. Some of these are native to our area, but some are not. For example, I know that the Chinese orchid and the marsh orchid are not native to Virginia, but I believe they can be grown here. Um, if you'd like to see some additional photos of hardy orchids native to Virginia, you can check out this website, the virginiawildflowers.org web, uh, website. It has a couple other uh, tags there to, to help you find that, but it has uh, very interesting pictures, but they did not allow you to copy them and put them in <laughs> your presentation. So that's why I wasn't able to insert them in the PowerPoint, but you can take a look at them. I think for me, out of uh, these other hardy orchids, the one that I really like the best is that egret flower, which really does look like an egret, doesn't it? Beautiful with that white fringe all around the edges. Okay, next slide, please. Okay, here's just some references. The photos and the information for this presentation came uh, from the, the following websites, so you can uh, check them out. The article that I found the most uh, easiest or had the most information, where is it? Oh, it's the very first one. It's from the University of Vermont, um, and that had really, really good information uh, about the hardy orchids. Um, if you're interested in purchasing hardy orchids, um, one place that I know that sells native plants, so if you have a hardy orchid that's a native plant, you might check plants by design in Crystal City um, and to see if they have them. If otherwise, it, when you go online and uh, if you just put in hardy orchids, many, many places come up um, that sell orchids. It looked to me like many of the orchids that they featured were the tropical kinds and not the hardy kinds, but uh, you can check them out and see if they would offer hardy orchids also for purchase. 